What up, everybody? Welcome to the Bible Leadership Podcast. This is Pastor Mark Carter, and I'm so thankful that you could join us today. So many of us are haunted with concerns about what other people think, and of course, this is a major detriment to leading strong for Jesus. Today, we're in part two of our talk with Pastor Brian Davies, and in this episode, we're going to ask the question every leader should ask themselves with some regularity, do I care too much what other people think? I think you're going to find some helpful advice here. So let's jump into the conclusion of my interview with Pastor Brian Davies. So number one was staying plugged into Jesus and self-care. Number two, Brian, finding my meaning in Jesus rather than people's feelings. I feel like this is a very interesting one because... You didn't say finding my meaning in Jesus rather than, you know, work or my significance. You said people's feelings. Tell us about that. Why are people's feelings a big deal for you? I'm learn, learning more and more about myself and how I'm wired and how one way in which the Lord has uniquely wired me is to care a lot about how people around me are doing and how they're feeling. And that can be both healthy and it can make me a good pastor. It yeah. can also be a gutter ball for me yeah. because I can base how I'm doing with how people are feeling about me. Yeah. And I've learned along the way through some roads of pain that I cannot base my sense of self on how people are feeling about me, yeah. but ultimately I need to be found in who the Lord has proclaimed me to be. Yeah. You've, you've talked about it this way to me before that you have this suspicion that even you don't even have to know that they're disappointed in you. Mm -hmm. It's just if maybe they're disappointed in you, that's like a heavy weight mm -hmm. for you to carry around. You feel like a failure, even if the other person was an idiot. You've never used that word, but <laughs> I would use that word. Uh, even if they totally were a moron, I'll still, and they jack something up. If they feel weird about me in your shoes, you're going to, you're going to feel almost like a failure because of that. What, like what had to happen? What did Jesus have to communicate to you to begin to give you some altitude above that curse? Really? Yeah, it's kind of kind of partly how God has wired me uh, to own people's feelings to an unhealthy degree, and and of course you don't know it yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're going through it. I just <laughs> knew that I was feeling so much weight, and then realizing it was starting to impact how I thought about myself and how I thought about my life and ministry. So eventually it got to the point where I need to talk to somebody about this and mm. talk to a counselor about it. And that's when the counselor is like, well, you know, these feelings you have, they make you a good pastor because you care. But the gutter ball is that it's going to, you're going to care so much that it's going to impact your leadership and ability yeah. to care for yourself. And he eventually rooted me back to, you know, the primary motivation for ministry is not people's feelings necessarily, but the Lord's call upon my life. And I come back to Luke chapter 10. Jesus sends out the 72. They have success in ministry. Ministries cook in. They're so excited to come back to Jesus and talk to him about it. And then this is uh, Luke chapter 10. And it kind of really picks up heavy in, in chapter uh, 10, verse 18, where he says, uh, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And what I love about the passage is rejoice not in success or in people's feelings, good or bad, yeah. but rejoice in who I've declared you to be. You're my child. Jesus, thank you. That's so awesome. So through, you know, you mentioned counseling, through meditating on scriptures like that, what have you discovered? Like, what is the enemy trying to tell you when this is going south? Uh, that I'm a failure. Yeah. The enemy is trying to tell me, like, stay away or, 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 mm. or don't dive in, get away from Jesus and your vocation because yeah. you're not you're not cooking. And so the trap would be, you know, you're taking too much ownership and responsibilities for people's feelings. And that can lead to super unhealthy highs and super unhealthy lows. Wow. Yeah. Um, and getting on the other side of that has been something you still wrestle with because it's how you're wired. But I think just having a recognition of it has been super helpful for me. I know when I'm wrestling through one of those moments where I'm feeling a real tension with somebody, whether it's imagined or real, it can almost be so distracting that it's paralyzing mm -hmm. some, sometimes, not all the time, but it almost can shut down. I've even had seasons where I probably underled mm -hmm. because I'm so distracted by this thing or I'm so worried about what someone else is going to yep. do. Um, I was a part of a church merger, and I think that w there, was, there was a season in there where I probably was less effective as a leader than I should have been because I was just so absorbed in what people might be feeling about something. And man, what a, 
just what an unhealthy thing to to stay in. So what have you yeah. found that's been helpful with this? Yeah. Before I go there, my middle daughter this week, for the first time in her life, had the experience of getting glass in her foot. And it was, uh, she's like, oh my gosh, my foot hurts, my foot hurts, my foot hurts. So I put her up on the counter and I saw it. I was like, you got a little piece of glass in your foot. And so I... I got tweezers and she was just freaking out about the tweezers. Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And so I said, let me just, let me just touch it. And that was a lie, of course. <laughs> and so I grabbed it, pulled it out. And, you know, it was such, in retrospect, the small thing. It was almost microscopic. You barely see it. But that small thing was causing so much chaos and turmoil for her. And I think that's a picture of what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, it, it, someone's feelings, and as important as they are, you know, it can impact your leadership. It can impact your sense of self and, mm-hmm. and who the Lord has you to, to be and, and, and what he has before you. Yeah. So to focus on, to kind of get out of this, I have to frequently ask myself, who am I doing this for? And counseling has helped me reframe that. My relationship with you guys and my accountability partners helped me reframe yeah. that. But I think it's important for leaders, especially those who are wired to think this way, to frequently ask that question, who's my audience? Yeah. I feel like I need to do that every day. Yeah. Like, like I'm better. I'm a better husband, pastor, human. Mm. If I'm just like, why are you doing that, moron? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially for me, a, a real area is when I have to go on stage. You know, just just try to train my brain before I go out. This yeah. is not about me. This is this is in one sense not even for them. It is my service to them yeah. for him. Yeah. That keeps me a little bit. We've never talked healthier. about that. Yeah. I say nearly the same thing. Yeah. Before I'm up there in that role. Because I'll even preach different. I'll, 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 you know what I'm saying? When, when I want you to think it's really good, mm. that's a way different level of power and authority, to mm. be honest with you, than when I'm like, look, baby, this is God's word. I care about you, but this is what it is. Mm. Like, that's just different. Mm-hmm. It's a different. I feel like even the anointing is usually different yeah. you know, in those encounters. So I've also realized along the way that I need more healthy contexts in my life. Uh, church can be very amoebic. It can take a lot of you. Um, I've experienced that in, in a number of ministry contexts, and I think it's important for me. I'm stronger yeah. if I'm kind of outside of that focused ministry context for different times in my life and different times totally in my week. It. So I get to serve as a chaplain for the Grays Lake Fire Department, and when I'm having a tough couple days or in that stretch where I'm kind of feeling a little worn out, going there is a wonderful yeah. place to just remind myself um, that, hey, there's 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 a big world here. Yeah. Kind of gets me out of thinking so much about what's before me. I know. I don't know if, if gals struggle with this the same way that I think guys tend to, but it's so easy for at least guys like me to, I'm going to pour everything into this. Like, mm. this is my thing mm. and I'm going to prove it, you know, and I'm going to go. Mm. And, and similar to what you're saying, it almost collapses in on you and suffocates mm. you. Because it's never ending, ministry's never done. So, like you, I've found like even this podcast, even just outside things, I need to do something that is not the church that I can win at. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's not just laying there. It's it's doing something. Oh, that was significant. That was a score, but it had no impact at all on my yeah. church. You know what I'm saying? And nobody's given a, a rip about it. You yep. know what I'm just me and Jesus like this. Yep. You know that I think that's super healthy. I love that, and I'm super thankful to be a part of a church. I, I believe it's true for you as well. That supports me and gets that, yeah. And that's a part of my health. Same. That's yep. a part of yep. my yep. connecting with Jesus, and that's a part of like making sure that my sense of identity is not just grounded in people's feelings, but it's much richer and deeper than that. Yeah, that's really good, man. So number one, we said three hard attitudes for long-term healthy ministry. Number one was staying plugged in to Jesus and self-care. Number two, we said finding our meaning in Jesus rather than people's feelings. People's feelings are always going to be there, but we need to find our meaning in Jesus. And then number three, you said it this way, my heart is more fully alive when the church resists focusing on us, meaning the, the people who are there, the church, and focuses rather on people far from God. You're kind of describing it like the spirit of joy, the Holy Spirit's presence was more tangible when your heart was focused in the right direction. Mm. Tell us about that. Like, like, how did you get there? What do you feel like goes wrong there? Why is that such a big deal? So I'm super thankful, like I just said earlier, uh, to be a part of a church that has helped me see this. And I feel like it's reconnected me with 
who I am and who God has wired me to be. So I grew up in a part of the country that was not incredibly church, but then for my theological training, you get entered into a really church part of the Midwest and learn how to do church systems and ideology and dynamics and lead a church. And it becomes very church focused and you feel like you kind of get made into a sausage of this is what a pastor is. Then like being in ministry here has helped me see how much joy I get being outside of a church bubble. I love serving a church. I love leading a church. I love worship. I love all that gets to be a part of it. But man, my heart comes alive when I get to be a part of people who are far from God. And so uh, that uh, being a part of this church, Lord of Glory has helped me be a part of that in so many ways. And so I guess I see part of long-term healthy ministry for me is getting connected with those parts of the outside of the church realm that so feed my soul. What do you got to do to do that? Because life is busy and people, you know, everybody's no, I mean, most of us who are listening to this podcast don't have a, a few hours to spare. Yeah. Right. And so it must be stuff that you do, Either you make room for it or you do it on the way. What do you personally have to do in order to access it? How do you access non-church life when your life is so full of church? Yeah, great question. And I think that's part of the journey that I've been on and the journey I'm on right now, which is life is busy and ministry is demanding. And I feel like I went through a season where I felt like, man, church is church takes from me emotionally, I'm not going to emotionally invest in people around me. And so that meant like when I was at a practice or a school pickup, I'd stay in my car and kind of hide. I'm sorry to admit that. Dude, same. Um, But then I felt like, holy cow, like God's placed me here for a reason. Like, how can I not see that? And so then I determined I'm going to get out of my car more and be outside more for that 10 or 15 minutes when you're waiting for a practice to end or 10 or 15 minutes when you're waiting for school to get out. And you just actually get to talk to people yeah. and you find out who are the people who aren't on their phones, who are the people that are warm to a relationship and are willing to talk and seize those moments that the Lord has before you. So it is, it's on the way and yeah. it's small decisions you make to invest in the people that are around you. And I've got a long way to go with this and I could learn a lot from you, Brian. I found one thing that can be helpful for me, even in church, because when you're at church, like if you work at a church you can always find something to do. There, mm. you, you know what I'm saying? You, you can go to your office. You can file stuff if you want to. I don't mm. know who files much anymore, but you could. <laughs> I've found that I need to pray specifically, Lord, get me out among the people and lead me to divine moments, like things that you're setting up. There's people, yeah. even on a Sunday morning, God, I, you know, I could, I could putz around and not engage as much, or I can ask you to enter in to make this a divine moment. I can go to the gym and do that. I can go out to dinner and do that. Lord, would you, you, you must be doing something in the room. If you want to use me in this, I just, I don't even have a plan this right. I just found yeah. that praying that prayer yeah. can be helpful to like, and then I see like, oh, wow, God got me in this conversation. It's yep. kind of cool. Yeah, that's super meaningful. So building on that, my wife is uh, serves in a political arena. And so we end up going to like events and dinners and meetings and stuff. And Gatherings, And what I found is sometimes when I'm talking to people, they'll be talking to me, but I can tell they're looking around the room for someone else to talk to. Yeah. And I was on the receiving end of that enough. And I realized, holy cow, do I ever do that to people where Mm -hmm. I'm looking at someone and talking to them, but I'm actually looking around to see who I'm going to talk to next. It's so hard not to do something. It's so hard not to do. But after it got done to me once or twice and realized how crappy it was, I kind of determined I'm never going to do that to somebody. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to trust that who the Lord has before me in that moment. That's it right there. Yeah. Is like, this is who the Lord wants me to talk to right now. And I don't. It doesn't matter if the most famous person or ancient book walked behind them. I'm going to be locked in on that person. Because yeah, yeah. that's who God has put before yeah. me in that moment right now. I commit to that on Sundays. And also like at those school pickup times, like, okay, I think the Lord wants me to talk yeah. to you right now. I'm here. I think that's so important for every ministry leader and person in this kind of a space. Because I can feel that. When there's a lot of people around, I'm like... I feel responsible to like fix all the things. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so I, you know, in my not great days, I'm, I can be looking around of like, mm-hmm. well, who's next or whatever. And then when I'm more in the spirit, it's more like, no, Lord, I want to do for one what I wish I could do for all. That's mm-hmm. not for me. That's for Manny Stanley. But I want to treat this one person like they're the most important room person in the room. And you'll send other people to these other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why there's other humans on the planet. So the Lord can, can use them. But yeah, what, a, what an important idea. Stay focused on the one in front of you. That's so big. Yeah, so I've loved getting to know and actually care for the actual people the Lord has put before me. And I've learned it helps 
it's human practices, right? It's asking open questions. It's asking how things are going. And as relationships develop, you get to follow up on things. And that has just turned into fruit that has brought me so much joy because that reconnects me with why I went into this in the first place. Yeah. And I think yeah. the more you connect with what ultimately brings you joy in ministry, the longer you're going to be in ministry because you're finding so much joy. I think that's so smart, man. And I think even, even for folks that aren't a two like you, for me, there has to be that regular reconnection to God actually loves these particular people. Like mm-hmm. he wants to help. He doesn't just want the church to move forward. He created the church that we're in right now to help the people. Yes. And so I need to, it keeps my heart soft when I'm like, Jesus cares about this one. Yeah. Jesus cares about this one. Yeah, it's so big, man. Hey, bro, this was super helpful today. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to share with our people? No, I just want to say thanks a lot for the opportunity and God bless your ministry. And this is great for emerging leaders to get a chance to dive into people's stories. Thanks again so much for joining us. Hey, if you dig this kind of thing, there's plenty more at Bible Leadership. Dot life, so check it out. If you want to support the Bible Leadership Podcast, you can do that at patreon.com slash Bible Leadership. And if you want to share this, man, that really helps the podcast, so please do. Hey, remember, the right move, the right leadership move is to honor the Lord. What honors Him most? Do that, and He'll pay you back even if it costs you. Lead strong today.